All right, we're doing something a little bit differently for this next fest. So I like to think I've gone a little bit wiser in terms of covering these games. You're going to find the complete, unaltered, and full runs of each night of next fest on the secondary channel there'll be a link to that down below and these videos will be specifically my favorite games from each night so with that said enjoy this video and i will see you for the next one all right we're starting things off with potionomics this is as close as we are going to probably get to a Reketeer spiritual successor from Nexfest. The story is that we have inherited our uncle's potion shop on a magical island, and in order to pay off the debt and become the best dang witch on the island, we are going to have to use that good old fashioned capitalism in order to save the shop. Much like Reketeer, the game is split between several different modes. But from what we saw during the demo, I don't believe there is any kind of dungeon crawling or combat aspects of it. Instead, the first thing you have is being able to craft potions. You'll need to gather ingredients or buy them from around the island. Every ingredient comes with kind of different properties. And your goal is when you combine the different colors, this will give you different potions. But you need to make sure that the amount that you're putting in stays equal. So you have, let's say, 3A, then you want to make sure you have 3C to go with it, or things can get out of line. The more you put into the potion, and the better job you do of mixing and keeping things going, will give you higher quality potions, which in turn will allow you to ask for more money. Now, with that said, you'll also have to manage the day-to-day -day of your shop, deciding which potions you'll put on display and where. And then, in a surprising twist, the game turns into a deck-building roguelike, or just a deck-builder, as you'll use different cards in order to raise the customer's interest in your product while playing cards to avoid stress or them making you upset as well. You have a limited number of turns or patience in order to get your goal as high as you can. And of course, the money that you earn this way will be used to buy gifts, buy more ingredients, upgrades, all that good stuff. And I like this game. There's a lot of charm to the animation and the aesthetics of our characters. And I am curious about kind of like where they're going to go in terms of difficulty. Reketeer could be a very nasty game if you didn't know what you were doing, and you got very unlucky with going into the dungeons. But I am definitely on board for Potionomics, and if you're like me looking for another shop sim-like-esque game, then definitely check out the demo. We now turn to Clash Artifacts of Chaos, and unlike our last game, this one's a little bit harder to describe. I guess the basic way is, what if Ace Team, the makers of Xenoclash, decide to do a Souls-like? And this is what we're getting. We play as Pseudo, a mysterious warrior in the same world as the original Xenoclash. We are surviving day by day until we find a boy, and we are going to try and take care of them while living off the land, fighting bad guys, and just trying to figure out what is going on. Unlike Xenoclash, there is certainly a lot more kind of happening in this game. There is a day-night cycle as Pseudo goes into his dream form, which allows him to access specific areas at nighttime. Combat is based heavily on dodging and chaining your different combos together. You can see my stamina bar in the upper left underneath my name. You'll be able to unlock specials, charge moves, equip gear, create energy drinks and a lot more to it. The game definitely has that surrealist charm of Ace's previous titles. My main issue with this game is that from the demo, the onboarding is not quite there. We were playing this and I just wasn't really sure what my objective was, where I was supposed to be going, and I just ended up wandering around and kicking a few things in the face before I just decided to get off. So. Ultimately, this is one of those games that if you are a fan of Ace Team for their original styles and takes on genres, I would definitely check this one out, but with the caveat that this is not the easiest game to jump into. And now we turn to Pile Up. 
This was actually submitted by one of the people on the Discord. And this is a casual kind of city builder, I guess a block kind of game. Our mission is to, well, pile up as many buildings as we can, keep everyone as happy, and avoid things blowing up in the process. How this works is that every building type that you see at the bottom comes with it a point value and will also kind of merge together when you put things on top of each other or near them, which I really like that effect. Buildings will require different things. Now, these objects can be everything from heating, garden, water, and so on. But some of these objects may not work well together. If you put something that, let's say, is about gas power next to a sparking electrical generator, well, I think you can guess what's going to happen. Now, from the demo, it feels like the game is going to be focused on score chasing. How far can you go? How many turns can you survive while keeping your city happy? If your city stays unhappy too long, you'll only have a few turns to rectify this, or you will lose and you'll have to restart. I do wish the UI was a little bit better in terms of showing where things are dangerous, as well as if you're placing buildings down, whether or not they all have like the same knee or if it's randomized. If you're looking for another very casual style like puzzle city builder game, definitely check this one out. And now we have Chess Survivors. Yep, it is another Vampire Survivors like. But there are several interesting twists here. This is surprisingly turn based, and we are, well, battling chess. Our mission is to survive as long as we can while chess pieces are coming after us, and they are going to be attacking just like on their respective chess boards. As you kill enemies and level up, you'll gain abilities and weapons that are all dice and board game related in order to fight back. You'll find elite chess pieces who will mess with you even more. And the game itself certainly delivers on a very unique premise as a vampire survivor like. My main issue from the demo is that it can be very chaotic. I would have liked to have seen maybe a UI indicator to let me know if I'm standing in a dangerous spot. It may be hard to tell from the footage, but this game is turn based. And the turns happen very quickly. And it's very easy, again, to kind of get completely surrounded or unsure as to how you're going to survive something. But if you are someone who hasn't gotten tired of Vampire Survivor likes and that kind of gameplay, and looking for one that is very different in its approach, definitely check out Chess Survivors. We now have Cassette Beast, which is kind of like a mix of Pokemon with like the teen drama and excitement of say a Persona or a Shimagami Tensai game. We are trapped in a mysterious world where no one seems to know how they got there or how to get out. To help us, we have discovered that we can trap the essence of monsters onto cassette tapes and by listening to the music, we turn into said monsters. And with that, we begin our journey around to figure out what is happening, collect lots and lots of monster forms, and of course, not die in combat. So if you've played any kind of monster collector style game in the past 20 years or so, then Cassette Beast should be very familiar to you. Every character will come with a different alignment and abilities, you'll have to fight enemies, and then you'll use blank cassette tapes in order to absorb their essence or, or aka capture them so you can then use that in combat in future plays. The map is nicely reactive as you'll explore for resources, solve puzzles, although I do really yeah. wish that there was a ability to run because you move very slow as your default speed. Now, the demo didn't hit at some advanced aspects, including allowing characters to fuse, which will allow you to combine essentially two monster forms into a single character to fight bosses and advance enemies with it. Now, if you're not a fan of kind of like the I guess I would say like high school like drama writing and kind of the overtop nature of it, then you may not enjoy the story as much with Cassette Beasts. But 
I think there is definitely some potential here if you are a fan of, again, like the Pokemon style monster collecting. I'm curious to see how far they go in terms of can you mix and match monsters, can they evolve, change, that kind of thing. So if you are looking for another monster collector, then I would recommend checking out Cassette Beasts. And with that, we're going to take a quick break and we have one more game for today's episode. And if you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, then check out my game design books. For entry level students, we have 20 Essential Games to Study, and then the Game Design Deep Dive series that takes an extensive look at different genres, with more coming soon. For the last game of our video, we have Super Fuse. This is an ARPG by way of the kind of cell shaded and kind of comic book aesthetic of, say, a Borderlands. Evil is afoot and we are going to hack, slash, punch, jump, and most likely shoot our way to find loot and treasure. Now, the game itself has one very unique feature compared to some of the other ARPGs we've played, and that is the ability to fuse abilities, aka super fuse, modifiers to all of our specials. This will allow you to change their properties, such as allowing your leap to do wider effects, Maybe get you more experience when you use it, increase attack properties, etc, etc. And I like that level of granularity when it comes to the skill design. However, the general moment to moment of Superfuse doesn't feel as responsive or as snappy as I would like to see in a lot of the RPGs that we played. You see, every move you do costs you energy, even your basic primary. And normally in games like this, the primary is what you use to gain energy back. So you can then get back to using all your fancy schmancy powers. And from what we could play of the demo, it is kind of hard to tell like what we should be looking at in terms of gear, boost, stuff like that. I just basically said, the rarer it is, put it on my character. And the UI could do with a little bit of being, I think, a little bit more reworking for upgrading skills, leveling up, that kind of thing. Now again, this is an early demo, as it says in the bottom right-hand corner, so I'm hoping that these things will be smoothed out over development. The game will, of course, be able to be played multiplayer, and there is certainly potential here for ARPG fans, but I hope that if, like down the line, we get a demo that I think is a little bit more refined or shows off this concept in a far better light. But with that said, we're going to wrap up Night 3 or the De Night 3 showcase of Next Fest 2022 here. Thank you for watching. You'll find links to all the games down below. If you're new, do the liking, subscribing, and commenting. Check out the Discord and Patreon and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where it's in the art and science of games.